sat in the stands at Foster Auditorium and watched that one, and I still think it's the most exciting basketball game I ever saw in my life. That's right. That's right. Well, one of uh, his teammates, another basketball standout from Fayetteville, was the next honoree, Harold Kelly. He was a three-year starter playing on two state tournament teams. Tigers finished third in 56 and second in 57. Harold was a leading scorer in 57 and was voted the outstanding player of that season when he was all-region and all-state. Went on to play semi-pro basketball for 10 years for two different teams. And yes, Harold could score about 38 points in a tournament final. Please welcome into the Fayette County Sports Hall of Fame, Harold Kelly. I want to thank the committee for nominating me for this uh, this award, uh, and I want to also thank my family for supporting me tonight. This whole group right here is my family, so I think there's about 30, at least 30 of them here, and uh, I really appreciate it. It really means a lot to me for you to support uh, me. Uh, Basketball for me, starting when I was in the second grade, uh, we didn't have a basketball goal like all the kids do now. But uh, I made one. We had a large family, we were nine, and nine of us children, so we couldn't afford a basketball goal if they made them. Uh, but uh, we, we didn't have running water in our house. We lived on a farm in Belt, Alabama. No running water. We had a well on our back porch. And my dad, they drew water out of that well with a wood bucket. And when that bucket started leaking, he gave me the bucket. And it had two rings on it, metal rings around the bucket. Some of you farmers know what I'm talking about. I took that ring and nailed it to some boards and put it on a post, and that was my basketball goal. And I didn't have a basketball. I think I started out with some socks or something and threw it up there. But uh, that's the way I started my basketball. And uh, then I went to Belk Elementary School. We actually had a gym there. It was made out of tin. And when it would rain, you couldn't hear yourself talk. And when the referees blew the whistle, you couldn't hear it because of the rain coming down. And that gym had a clay floor dirt clay floor, and that's where the way I learned how to dribble was on that clay dirt floor. And after I graduated from Belton went to Fayette and had an opportunity to play basketball for Coach J.D. McClendon, one of the greatest coaches in the state of Alabama. Played uh, with him for three years. And I'll have to mention again the Scottsboro game. But you know, I appreciate Fayette. It, it's, it means so much to me because I got a great education here. Had some wonderful teachers. Right tonight, I could name all the teachers I had in high school. They meant that much to me. You know, the one thing I regret about that is I left Fayette and I've been gone three times longer than I lived in Fayette, but I never came back to tell those teachers how much they meant to me, what they did for me in my life. But I did have an opportunity to spend a whole day with Coach J.B. McClendon, Earl Ballard and myself and four or five others. Went over one Saturday to Atlanta, Georgia and spent the day with Coach McClendon and his lovely wife. Had lunch with them. Spent the day, one of the greatest days I've ever spent because this man poured himself into my life and he means so much to me. Uh, he's helped me. He showed me what life was all about. He showed me what hard work was about. Now Earl Ballinger over there, I'll tell you, we used to play basketball practice, and we had a five-pound medicine ball that he would make us run up down the court with that five-pound medicine ball. And you ever tried to throw a five-pound medicine ball? It's tough, but that's the kind of person he was. He was a great coach, and I enjoyed playing with him. Now, one thing Melvin didn't tell you about that Scottsboro situation, we won the district, we beat Winfield 50 to 49. Isn't it funny how you remember a score of a game that happened 57 years ago? 50 to 49. And on Monday when we got, we prepared for the state uh, playoffs. 
We didn't practice for Glencoe, that was our first team. We didn't practice for our second team. Coach McClendon went straight to Scottsboro on Monday and said, we're going to freeze the ball. He showed us how we were going to do it, and we, we planned it. It went to two overtimes, I believe, and then Earl shot the winning basket 20 to 18. What a great rain. But I tell you, we were, not, we were not appreciated much in that stadium. That stadium was packed with Scottsboro fans, and they didn't appreciate it. They were 32 and 0. Hardly uh, anyone even came close to beating them. And uh, they averaged almost 100 points a game. They were a great team. They had uh, Pat Trammell was on that team. He, coached, he played with Bear Bryant. They had uh, Bo Davis. He played for Shoot Jerk. Uh, Paul Nix. They had a great. They had great athletes. But uh, Coach McClendon outsmarted them that day. You know I I won a lot of trophies playing basketball, and um, some of those trophies are in my attic. They're tarnished. Some the goodwill have some of them, but uh, they're not worth a whole lot. But the greatest trophy that I ever received in my life was when I received Jesus Christ into my life. It changed my life. It gave me eternal life. You know, the great Albert Einstein, uh, he was taking a trip one time from Princeton University, and he went on this passenger train. And when the conductor came around to stamp his ticket, he couldn't find his ticket. The conductor finally said, Dr. Einstein, I know who you are, and I believe you bought a ticket. Don't worry about it. So he continued on down the car. And he got to the end of the car, and he turned around and looked back up, and Dr. Einstein was on his, on his hands and knees still looking for that ticket. He rushed back up to where Dr. Einstein was, and he got up off the floor. He said, Dr. Einstein, I know who you are, and I know you bought a ticket. Don't worry about it. So Dr. Einstein got up, looked him in the face, and he said, young man, I too know that I bought a ticket. I too know who I am. The thing I don't know is I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> you know, as a, as a chaplain and as a minister, I work with people sometimes that are near death. The sad thing about it, so many of them don't know where they're going. You know, I know where I'm going when I leave this room because of my experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. But many people don't know that. I hope you do know where you're going when you leave this earth. God bless.